Welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of The Glittering Bell Jar. We have taken a little break, we have gotten rejuvenated, we have let the seasons change, and we are back. We are so excited. I am here with my co-host, Bree. You want to say hi, Bree? Hi, everyone. Woo! I am excited to be back. And everyone, you want to say hi to Bree? Okay, crickets. <laughs> no. Uh, thank you, everyone. If you have listened to Season 1, if you've joined us for this episode, for this season, we are so excited. And as you know... We are doing something different. We are not doing weekly episodes. We are doing Drummel daily episodes. So from now until the end of June, if you are listening in real time, you are getting a new episode every single day. Now, we are not going to be offended if you wait, let a few of them stack up and binge them because they're a little bit shorter than the past ones. But we hope you will stick with us for all 30 days for all 30 chapters of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Because as last season, we went through Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, and we are working backwards through the series. We are now on Half-Blood Prince, which happens to be both Bree's and my favorite book. So even if you are brand new to the podcast, you are joining us at a great time, because this is a book we both love, and we are going to be digging into it. Are we ready? Oh, man. Yes, I think so. It's already pretty exciting, uh, just with the first chapter. So I am ready. I know. So... Just to give everyone a quick recap of what's going to happen, since it's a little bit different than last season, each episode is a chapter. So we're going to get shorter and punchier with our intros. We're going to get right into the meat of it. We're going to keep it short, making it so that if you are out for a run, if you're taking the dog for a walk, if you are rocking a crying baby, whatever you're doing, you're probably not commuting. People aren't quite commuting yet, but whatever you're doing, this episode will be nice and short. You can get right into it. So with that, let us jump right into this first chapter, aka the last chapter of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. All right. Chapter 30, The White Tomb. So chapter 30, the last chapter in The Half-Blood Prince, focuses on Dumbledore's Dumbledore's funeral at Hogwarts. He has just died, and it is the day of of his funeral. Throughout the chapter, Harry begins to grapple with the fact that Dumbledore has in fact died, and the mission he has ahead of him, the very dark mission he has ahead of him, to find the remaining four Horcruxes. Dumbledore's funeral has many people that attend, from mer people, centaurs, fudge, and even stupid umbrage. During the funeral, Harry begins to accept that Dumbledore is truly gone and he is truly alone. His protectors have all left him. He makes up his mind to break up with Jenny and forgo the next year of school. Instead, as we know, to plan his search for the Horcruxes alone. Of course, in the end, both Ron and Hermione tell him that they are in this together and he will not be so alone after all. Great recap. And the last sentence is an entire paragraph. It's a great one, though, so stick with me. Harry's hand closed automatically around the fake Horcrux, but in spite of everything, in spite of the dark and twisting path he saw stretching ahead for him, in spite of the final meeting with Voldemort he knew must come, whether in a month, in a year, or in ten, he felt his heart lift at the thought that there was still one last golden day of peace left to enjoy with Ron and Hermione. Hmm. Which, as you all might recall, we started off last season talking about how last words are so important. Mm -hmm. And the last words in this book are Ron and Hermione, which is a real testament to the way this book kind of feels. Yep. Yeah, that was a very good catch. I love that. Um, I felt like this last sentence also kind of gave us a feeling for how this book is. Because this book already feels lighter. I know dark stuff's happening and it just has happened. Dumbledore has just died. But it immediately feels easier to read. Um, it is just not as dark, not as heavy. There's still like a little bit of uh, dusk or, you know, it's not quite nighttime yet. It's There's still a little bit of sunshine out. Yeah, that's funny you say that because I just posted a reel today on one of my other accounts about twilight and different stages of going from <laughs> daytime to nighttime. And then, yeah, we're still in one of those twilight phases in this book. And the end is certainly fun. the darkest part of the book. So we're we're working backward from there into what I think most people agree is one of the lighter books, even as it works through some very heavy material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm going to be super obsessed. I'm not going to lie. Harry and Ginny's relationship. I am so excited for this book. You only get a couple months of it. They, you know, they aren't together very long, but so I am so excited to dive into Harry and Ginny's relationship. Um, As you know, we ship Harry and Ginny's relationship hard in the book, not so much in the movie. And immediately we're taken to the intimacy that they have together. Um, They're sitting together at the funeral. Um, You know, he, he already feels, he feels better when he's next to her. 
Um, and you get to see this different side of Jenny. He, at the end of the funeral, he tells her, Hey, like I'm, I, I can't be with you anymore. And she's not shocked. She's not upset. Like she wants to fight him on it, but she knows better. And there's this like wiseness in her and there's like this connection. And, um, yeah, I just, that little tidbit, this little chapter so far that I'm just very, very happy about it. Yeah, I had a note on the interaction between Ginny and Harry where she says, I never really gave up on you and specifically says, Hermione told me to get on with life, maybe go out with some other people, just be myself. And there's this great little joke, which is Harry responds to saying, smart girl, that Hermione. Like, yeah, Hermione's <laughs> wicked smart, even in relationships, which is why it's such a pain that it takes Ron so long to figure anything <laughs> out because Hermione figured it out in like third year, you know? so very true that is so very true yeah yeah maybe she I could see her being like a psychologist if she didn't you know like in a different mm. life she did potentially want to be a healer actually we are obviously not in that book that would be order of the phoenix when they talk about career advice one of my favorite chapters of all time yeah. um uh, when when McGonagall and Umbridge are going at each other but we'll get there we'll get there uh, <laughs> Uh, did you catch that? Not only we discussed this last season, but you know, Hagrid carries Harry mm-hmm. to the Dursleys. He carries Harry out of the forest and he carries Dumbledore to his final resting place. I thought that was, now that you clued me in on that, I thought that was a really cool piece of connection between Harry and Dumbledore's characters. Yes. Yes. I caught that immediately. And I also was wondering, I didn't have time to dive into it, but I thought maybe you would have something to think about the symbology of the purple and the stars that were on the, um, the velvet that he was wrapped in. Yes, I don't have, I'm just moved my series out from my desk, but I believe that when Dumbledore arrives at Privet Drive in the very beginning of the first book, he's wearing purple cloak with golden stars on it. I yes. believe that is the case. As I, think I know, you're right. you true super fans will correct me if I'm wrong. And I will probably <laughs> go check as soon as we finish recording and, be upset if I was wrong. Yes. I think you're right, actually. Yeah. Uh, what about the funeral guests? I feel like there was a lot to be said about the funeral gr- guests. Yeah, I I didn't really dive into that list hmm. thinking about it too deeply, but I thought it was interesting how varied everyone was. In particular, the person who jumped out to me was the Harry bass player from the wizarding group, the Weird Sisters. Hmm. Because a little bit of what we know about Dumbledore's character and his life outside of being headmaster is he was at one point a young gay wizard and probably loved a band called the Weird Sisters. And I just thought like I could totally see a younger Dumbledore striking up a friendship with like his favorite band. And he's like a notable, he's like a notable, he's like an Elon Musk of the wizarding world, like solving all these problems. And he's like, I want to be friends with my favorite band. And then one of them shows up at his funeral. That was my favorite person on the list. How about you? Oh my God. I love that. That is so true to like picture young Dumbledore. Dumbledore and yeah you're right he probably would have loved the weird sisters like I mean he wouldn't you know but definitely yeah young gay wizard like come on <laughs> can you picture him at a like weird um, sisters. yeah right like at a rave or something like a wizarding rave where everyone's like playing with their wands or something I don't <laughs> big like long flowing auburn hair going wild oh yeah it was the 70s once for Dumbledore too <laughs> yeah I bet he was hot too I mean let's be honest <laughs> I mean, he's played by Jude Law. I think we can all agree how that's... Um, yeah, you know, I thought it was at least a little bit satisfying that, um, of course, Umbridge is acting like she's sad. She's such a faker, horrible person. But um, I did love the, the little moment we got where she's uh, scared of Ferenzi, <laughs> the centaur. She kind of like jerks a little. Like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, you are scared of something, at least. Still, um, still and afraid then- of... <laughs> As she should be, frankly. Um, Mm -hmm. And then Rita Skeeter with her notebook. Like, she probably was literally in there trying to get people to talk during a funeral. I guess we know she did. Like, she's literally just the slimiest person, you know? Like, I guess sometimes as a journalist, you have to be. But she took that opportunity to dig in. I mean, she had to get 900 pages written as quickly as possible. (laughs) Right. Yeah, she definitely pulled some (laughs) all-nighters. Yeah. And then, of course, Tonks and Lupin holding hands. I thought that was... I noticed that. I was like, oh... Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is something that I want to keep an eye on. I was on the fence whether we were keeping an eye on Tonks or on Lupin. I think it'll just be both of those characters moving through this book because last book, last season, we talked about certain characters and we kind of kept an eye on them. For me, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be keeping an eye on Lupin and Tonks because I think that here Mm -hmm. he's with Tonks, but we know that doesn't go well. We know that within a very short amount of time, I mean, within two and a half months, he's already trying to go on the road with Harry, Ron and Hermione. So um, it's, I think it's meant to feel like a little bit of icing on top at the end of the, this book, but we know now it's not how it goes. 
Right. That they got pregnant quick, huh? Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wasted no time. <laughs> they also got married quickly, to be fair. They got married right away. So there was no judgment. Just nope. Noticing. <laughs> Middle of a war. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> no joke. Um, you know, one thing that there are a lot of Harry Potter fans that believe that Dumbledore ended up turning into a phoenix, and there's not a whole lot to there hasn't been anything that I know of that J.K. Rowling has said anything to confirm it, but it says Bright white flames had erupted around Dumbledore's body and the table upon it which it lay. Higher and higher they rose, obscuring the body. White smoke spiraled into the air and made strange shapes. Harry thought, for one heart-stopping moment, that he saw a phoenix fly joyfully into the blue. But next second, the fire had vanished, and its place was a white marble tomb encasing Dumbledore's body and the table on which he had rested. So probably he did it, but that, that gives enough of a seed to think, like, huh, maybe. Yeah. I guess I always thought that might be Fox because Fox takes flight and is out flying around the grounds and maybe came to pay his last mm. respects. I don't know. That's what I always thought or was there with Dumbledore. Yeah. And he wouldn't be killed by fire. So I don't know. I kind of like think that. it's okay. interesting that Fox is gone forever. You know, we don't yes. ever have him anymore. He just leaves or dies. I don't know. I don't really know about the life cycle of Phoenixes. Uh, he's immortal. So I think he just lives forever. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Just kind of sad so anyways yeah yeah it was a good chapter was there anything else like you noticed that you wanted to point out um a couple other things that i had um yeah. i said i'm going to keep an eye on lupin and tonks i'm also going to keep an eye on seamus finnegan which i think will last for more than one book because mm -hmm. i really liked how now at the end of book six he's standing up to his mother about what he believes is right in the wizarding world and that comes after the beginning of Order of the Phoenix where Seamus arrives back at school and is giving Harry a hard time saying he doesn't believe him about Cedric Diggory's death. And so Seamus has certainly come a long way in these two books. And we know how far he has to go because he ends up, of course, fighting and resisting as a student at Hogwarts. So I'm just going to keep an eye on him. I always liked him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I, speaking of keeping an eye on people really quick, Harry has pity for Malfoy in this chapter. He actually talks mm -hmm. about how he had a bit of pity. And I don't, I don't recall really Harry ever pitying Malfoy. And I feel like, um, yeah, this was an interesting one where he's like, he realized that Malfoy didn't want to kill Dumbledore. And um, it was because he was worried about his family getting killed by Voldemort. Yeah, not only didn't want to kill Dumbledore, would not have killed Dumbledore. Right, he put his wand down. His wand, which is the mm -hmm. important part. Yeah, I had, I have a note on that too about... That's the seed that is then in Harry's heart going through all of Deathly Hallows where he defends, basically defends Malfoy, keeps him safe, even when all oh, instinct says he shouldn't or when it puts his own life at risk. It's because he does have that little tiny little seed of pity realizing that Malfoy was made into the villain he is. He did not come out that way like some of the other bad guys that Harry encounters. Yeah, yeah, so true. Speaking of bad guys, I did think one thing I thought was really interesting is they talk uh, the discussion about um, Snape and his mother and his father. So Hermione determines backstory. De Hermione determines that Eileen Prince was Snape's mother. And mm -hmm. so he has a witch mother and a, a muggle father, which is the same as Voldemort. And Harry's the opposite. So that is the one way in which these mm -hmm. half-blood men are different. Harry's father was the wizard and his mother was the, the muggle. And so they are the same at their core, but it shows how different that can be, you know, depending on whether your mother or your father was the, the magical one in the relationship. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good catch. Hmm. And that's all I had for this chapter. Um, I did have a lot of notes, but we covered most of them in on our own. Um, yeah. so yeah, it went pretty quick. Uh, I'm really excited to dive in. Do you have anything else you want to cover before we wrap up today? No, no. Um, it was a good chapter. I mean, it's all about the funeral. And I think it was just nice to, it was interesting to see the end and really get to slow down and focus on the details of the funeral and how Harry's feeling and how it probably would have been in his mind very fast, but very slow at the same time. So. Yeah, I actually did have a note on that as well, where he gets those moments of where he kind of wants to laugh and can't make sense of his own emotions during the funeral. And for me personally, I always thought that that was a real testament to Dumbledore's character, that even at the moment where people are grieving him, the memories they have of him are, are joyous mm -hmm. or, or enough to make them laugh. 
And I loved that as a way of giving Harry a break from this burden that he's beginning to take on to himself. Never mind his grief over Dumbledore's passing. And it's compounded because then he's thinking of Sirius and his parents and all these other people who've stepped in front of Voldemort for him. But then he can sit there and think of, you know, Nitwit, Oddman, Bugger, <laughs> and Tweak at the same time. And it's a really nice balance when most of what J.K. Rowling used to do for levity does not going to work in this chapter. It's just not appropriate here. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That that's very very true. You're right. Only only Dumbledore could elicit those those feelings. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that mm -hmm. too. Well, thank you, everyone. This was a short, fun, one-chapter episode, as we are doing for this season. We hope you like it. We would love your feedback. If you would like to leave us a review on your favorite podcast player, that could be Apple Podcasts, that could be Spotify. We love ratings. We love reviews. We would also love if you shared us with a friend. Maybe share us with your favorite Slytherin. I mean, I'm a Slytherin. I can ask you to bring more people to the, <laughs> to the audience, please, so they feel me when I have my Slytherin moments. I'm actually wearing Slytherin socks today. And then, Bree, do you want to remind people where they can find us on social? Of course, yes. Please follow us, join us, uh, Bell Jar Pod. We are on Instagram, we are on TikTok, we are on Twitter. So please come say hi, give us a like, share. We love to hear it. If you have any feedback on the episode, you are more than welcome to do it on Instagram. Um, you can do it one of our reels or, of course, leave a review or send us an email. Yep. Uh, you can reach us by email at <laughs> podcast at followthebutterflies.com. Followthebutterflies.com is the Harry Potter blog that I run alongside this podcast. So there is plenty more Harry Potter if you did not get enough from this shorty episode today. And with that, we will wrap it up and we will see you for the next episode. See you next time. <laughs>